God is so good. You're so worthy. You're so mighty. You're so wondrous. We thank you for this day. Many blessings your hand upon us. Your spirit be in God. The privilege and honor that we have to be here at the house of the living God. As we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Father, you brought us to this day. You've been with us every step of the way. Father, we know we've not arrived, Father, so to speak. But Father, our trust and our faith is in you and you alone. We know today as we stand here, many different people in this place may be facing, every person may be facing a different opposition, a different battle, we could say. But Father, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Word of God, Father, that has within it the ability to change and alter the course of our lives forever. And Father, this morning, no matter where we are in our walk with you, we're all fast in the confession of our faith. And we thank you, Father, Jesus is not only the author, but he's the finisher. He's the completer. He's the one that brings it to the end. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. The work he's begun inside of us, he's well able to bring to fruition and completion. Now, Father, months ago, this, this service today wasn't on the schedule with the calendar events for this year. Months ago, you said move in to minister on, and teaching on healing on Wednesday night. You said to come in to minister God's plan for your prosperity or provision. You said to minister those things and of course flow with the Spirit of God in the process of time as you let otherwise we follow otherwise. But you said there would come times when you wanted me to stop and have a testimony service and let people share what you have done in their lives. You told me about two weeks ago to set up this day for that purpose. And Father, we know, as we've already prayed this morning, those that will share this morning what you have done, they may not preach or teach every week, they may not have a pulpit ministry, but they have a testimony about what you've done. So we thank you as they come this morning and they open their heart and mouth. We thank you, Father, to have wisdom and boldness in the Holy Ghost to share with the crowd, get out, exactly how great things God has done for them. And the people in the place as well as myself have come expecting to receive what thus said the Spirit of God through each and every individual testimony. And we thank you our faith will be built to a greater place, a greater level than ever before so we can walk with you and talk with you and just experience you. And not only that, but go out into this world as we pray and, and be lights to shine in the darkness. We count it done by faith right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You can be seated at this time. Amen. I'm not going to preach to you if the children I, I, I think they may be gone already. I want you to go to Mark 5. I'm going to use one passage of Scripture. With you, we need to grab the microphone there. Is that the one? Is it on the one? Yeah. As I said, we are grateful for all that God has done for the place that we've come to. And again, we're not stopping, but, but many people have everybody in this place, I dare say, that she was just born again yesterday. And that, that's enough of a testimony, but everybody has a testimony about what God has done. And we've asked that you would pray, you know, the different people in this place in, in the last few weeks. And, and we have a list of those who want to share, and we have several. So I've got a few, just one thing I'm going to say as far as scripture. But last, this past Wednesday night, the Lord moved again in the healing service. But Mark chapter 5, is the whole, I'm a, if you wasn't here, you won't know. But this fellow was in a bad way. He's, he's possessed of the devil. He's bound. We could say good country talk. They couldn't do nothing with him in town, so they didn't run him out of town. They got him chained up in the tombs out here in the caves. And, and the devil's just, he's cutting himself and all kinds of stuff. He's just in a bad way. He's got no quality of life. You know, and nobody could help him. He's breaking the chains and all kind of stuff. You know, there's no such thing as a hopeless person when it comes to Jesus. Amen. Right? If they'll receive of him. This guy ran into Jesus. And we know, make a long story short, Jesus cast the devil out of him. And we'll pick all the way up in Mark 5.15. Because again, I'm not teaching or preaching. But I am the shepherd. It's my responsibility to govern what's done here. I answer to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Right? So Mark 5.15. This is this fellow's been set free. They come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. Legion. Now he's sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. This guy's had such a stark change in his life after Jesus cast these demon spirits out that it actually shocked the people that knew him before. And they that saw it told them, verse 16, how it befell him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning the swine because the Jesus permitted the demon spirits to go in the swine and 
Then, of course, the demon spirits drown the, the swine. But verse 17, And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. 18, When he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. This guy wanted to stay and travel with Jesus that had been set free. This is what Jesus said to him. Now, especially those that are intending on giving your testimony, I want you to listen to me because I want to make sure that it's clear what a testimony is to you because we want to follow the biblical pattern, right? So, he said, this guy wanted to go with Jesus. Jesus told him in verse 19, he suffered him not. He didn't let him go with him. He said to him, Go home to thy friends and do what? Tell them, this is your testimony, tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish. Tell them. What does it mean to tell? I wrote these things down. It means to announce or declare. Report. You're announcing this morning what God has done for you. Right? And he departed and began to publish. Publish means to proclaim openly. Again, something which has been done. How great things Jesus has done for him. And all men did marvel. That word marvel means to wonder. So as this guy gave his testimony about what God, what the Lord Jesus had done in his life, it opened the hearts of the people under the sound of his voice. Right? So as you give your testimony, your testimony today... And I know this might not even affect hardly anybody, hope nobody, but I do this every time because we've had these different services go in directions they shouldn't. It needs to all be done decently in order and it needs to be done to the edification of the body of Christ. Right? So a testimony service, service your testimony, it's not teaching. It's not preaching. And it's not directing and correcting the church. Amen. That's not biblical. Your testimony, whether and, and there are people who will come up here and say all these great things happen. One happened in the healing service. One happened as a step out and obey God as you've been teaching on financial provision. But it doesn't have to be about this church. It doesn't have to be what happened here. You could believe God out yonder in the field somewhere and God meets you and you share what God has done. That's your testimony. It's fine if it took place here. But our goal is to glorify God. You understand that? about what He has done in your life and the way He has moved. So we want to know and we want to follow that pattern and we want to glorify glorify the Lord God Almighty and again, cause people in here to see. And I know everybody in here may already know how awesome God is and how much He's blessed us. But cause people to see as you trust God, He'll do just what He said. Yes. Amen. So I've got a list up here. We've asked you to do it this way. And, and, and we've got a list of who's going to come. And, and when you come up, I know that it's hard to remember this if you don't do it all the time. Y'all said this is on? But if you, if, and I know it's, it's, it's different ones deal. Sometimes you hold it down here, you can't hear it. If you hold it up to your mouth, we'll, you'll be able to hear it and, and, and be able to record it. So we're going to give you, and we've asked, and because we have a list. Your testimony is important, but remember, so is everybody else's. So I've been asked about the time frame. We put something out yesterday, I believe. The time frame, we'd say five to ten minutes. And if you go two minutes, that's perfectly fine. It's, it's fine. I know mine will probably be two minutes years back. It might be one minute years back. But, but again, we're trying to keep it in a time frame, not because we're trying to suppress your, but we're trying to value everybody. Do you understand that? So if one person takes off 30, 40 minutes, it messes up what everybody else needs to share. So we're looking at a max of, of, of five to ten minutes or so just to share what God has done in your life, right? and to build the faith of others in the place. So I've got a list here, and I'm going to see if Mr. Nathan Grant will come first. Our professional painter. He's been the one painting everything. Miss Shannon gives him direction, right? And he's the, he's the, he's the professional. She does give me direction. <laughs> About 10 years ago, she wanted to move down here. She wanted to go to Myrtle Beach, and I kept saying, no, no, no. <laughs> So then about five years ago, she kept showing me these houses and stuff, and she found one in Marion here that we could buy out of our pockets. So I said, yeah, I'll do that, thinking I'm only going to come down here in the winter because I paid. So anyway, we bought it, and it, it was a biker hangout, and it was a biker club. <laughs> and the neighbors were glad to see us coming. So... <laughs> So anyways, we moved in, I, we didn't move in, I had to fix the place up, it needed a lot, I'm still fixing it up. But anyways, um, I'd come down here in the winter months when I didn't have a lot of work, and I'd bring my dog, and my dog, every time he went in that house, he'd growl. He'd look into one of the bedrooms. And I, I thought it strange, and then one of the neighbors said, somebody OD'd in there. 
And I thought, whoa. So I cast a demon out of it. It's funny, animals, I believe animals know the spiritual world. But anyway, they recognize it and they sense things. But anyhow, um, time went on and I guess I weren't fixing it fast enough for her. So we ended up buying this other house that I, I was just going to fix up for somebody. And, and think, but we bought it and, I, and he had it so cheap I thought I can make money on this. So then we were gonna, I was going to sell it. My children took notice of it, and they came and stayed in it for a while. So it, it lingered on and on. And finally, about a year ago, the pastor and I joined hands, and I said, I'm going to sell this house. So we, we prayed and had a realtor come look at it. And we were living in the house now because it was better than the other one. So anyhow, he told me, he says, you need to move out of that house and make it so it's ready for somebody, and then it'll sell better. So I said, all right. So I said, I'll, I'll call you when I'm ready. So a whole year has gone by before I was really ready. So in the meantime, you meet people in life. You say things, you meet people, and, you know, some things get pushed to the wayside. I totally, I didn't forget that I had told him, but I met another realtor, and I went with her because she was going to ask a lot more money. So the house was not selling. And I'm telling you, everything in Marion is selling right now. People are moving here. This is like a hot spot. It's close enough to the beach. Thanks to Mel Gibson, he's put us on the map a little bit because it has some history. So anyway, my house was not selling. I've been listed for almost three months. And I had people say, I wonder why your house isn't selling. Because some people said, it should sell. It's, you know, it's worth it. So... God reminded me, you told that man you would call him, and you didn't do it. You called somebody else. So I was talking to the realtor that was working with me, and I told her, I said, you know, i got to get a hold of him. She says, nah, he's fine. She says, I know him. We don't get upset about that stuff. So I brushed it off, and it still didn't sell. You know, weeks went by, and God reminded me. And so I jumped in my wife's car, and there's a... A refrigerator magnet he had given us with his name and stuff and his cell phone number and God and I called him God told me he said this isn't about him it's about you and your word so I called him and I you know I apologize I hadn't called him and I explained you know the situation and everything and you know he said that's fine and I offered him money he would take it but anyhow the next day, the realtor called me and said, your house is under contract. They want to put a contract in it. And he had looked at it the very same day that I had called that man. And it's now it's being sold for twice as much as what it There's a message in there. It does work that way. Absolutely. Some of us have found out just like they the hard way. Some of us has waited and then realized, and, and as you obey God, it works. Amen? Amen. Well, I got a list here, but I'm going to follow the Spirit of God. Ms. Benton, you going to come and share. It's either Ashley or Nicole or both. Marley calls it one thing, I call it another. But I think, I think, yeah, you say Ashley. I say Nicole. Okay. Gotcha. Ashley. So neither one of us are wrong. So, initially, about two years ago, um, maybe a little longer, I'm going to go a little further back, I survived a 15-year domestic violence relationship. I uh, got on my feet, got the word of God, I started doing great. God took me from an air mattress in my ex-mother-in-law's living room floor to a two-bedroom on piece of land, and I was running my own I turned around and I slapped him in the face with every bit of glory that he had given me and my kids. And I lost it all within months. I fell off on drugs for the first time in my life. I backslid so far. I used to sit on this high horse. You know, like, it's not that I thought it was better than everyone. I just had a spirit that sounded a little higher. And I took advantage of that. And then I'm down people. 
those that I was trying to help, I was trying to help, I actually mocked them without realizing it. And it took a toll on my own life. With that being said, I fell off on drugs for three and a half, four months. Um, I left, I got clean in my own the word of God. In the midst of me being on drugs, I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I beat my palm and I cried and I cried. And I was like, God, I know I've done wrong. <laughs> If you don't leave me in this pit, I promise I'll get right. And he didn't. He did not leave me in a pit. And I found my way to Marion. And I started church here. I really didn't know where it was going to go. And didn't know if God was even going to give me another chance. But here I am two years later. And I'm sober. I've got a peaceful land in Hartsville. I'm starting to bring family in. I don't have my kids back yet. But God, because of you and this church and his word and my faith, my faith alone unlocked that door. And I just want to thank God so much. I've got a long way to go. Guys, it's not easy. I promise it's not easy. But look, if you just give him five minutes here, 20 minutes there, just little by little, I promise you, he will not keep you in that pit. Just keep your faith. Hold strong, even when it doesn't seem right, it seems hard, hopeless. I promise you, God, I can't tell you enough. I can't tell you enough. God will never leave you. Just, just have that little faith in the guys. And thank you.
the doctor came in, both of us, I had Lisa go with me because I want to be able to have a testimony and a witness. So the doctor said, you know how doctors are, the days you come back and they said, yes, you have an aneurysm aorta and it's larger than it's supposed to be and it won't get any better. It will only grow bigger and eventually what we'll have to do is go in if we catch it in time that's real encouraging and I'm looking at her and I was like oh if we catch it in time then we'll uh, do, do a procedure but we can fix it but we need to catch it in time. So what we'll do is we'll keep monitoring you every six months just to see where it's at. And when it gets a certain size, then we'll go in and we'll do a procedure. So right then, when I got that word first of last year, I said, no, I'm not doing that. My God's bigger than anything a doctor can say. But I went through and did procedure next procedure and they said they came back with the results last year and they said well it's still the same come back next year another six months and we'll test it again but we've been standing on the word i've been confessing the words you know we're re-encouraging ourselves this morning iron and sharpening iron on the way here and uh and uh, you know i've been i just been confessing simple prayers daily <coughs> about my aorta about lungs and heart and all these other things so i had a test uh first of April, that had results on the first of April. Now remember, the doctor said, one, it won't get any better, and it will only grow bigger, and eventually you'll have to do procedure. So I got the result in April, and the, Lord's, and the Lord just showed me, before I walked in the office, I said, Lord, I know, I know what my testimony is. What is the result? He said, you'll be surprised. So I walked in, and the doctor was there, and they really were having a whole time trying to find something to say. But he did. He came back and he said, well, you know, she, excuse me, she came back and she said, you know, you know your results are a little different. And I'm thinking, bracing myself. And then it turns out she said, your numbers are X, Y, and Z. And I just looked at her. And they're trying to put you know, you probably, maybe this result's not right. I said, oh no, it's right. The results have actually, the aorta size had actually gone down. It's not supposed to do that. But the fact of the matter is that it is decreasing in size. Now, one of the confessions that I have been making is about God's got new parts. He's got all the parts in the world that we ever need. I'm telling you, he's got brand new ones. And I've been confessing brand new in yeah, yeah. Normal in size. Yeah. But my results came back, and I have it on tape. That they are, the sizes and measurements are smaller than they have been for the last two and a half years. <coughs> and they're continuing to decline. Yes, 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 Amen. Yes. And then, I guess one other thing is on March 30th, the evening of March 30th, approximately 7.45 in the evening, and I'll be brief on this part of it. The pastor laid hands on me for another symptom that I have in my body related to my left hip. The pastor laid hands, and immediately when he laid hands, I felt the power of God, and I felt heat and warmth come into my left hip. And at one point, it is not totally healed, I'm going to continue on with the confession, but at one point in the last two and a half, three years, I have not been able to do this at all without excruciating pain. But that pain is no longer there. And the healing is taking place, and the recovery is taking place in this hip. I am not going through surgery again. Amen? Amen. If you knew what was on the, on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. 
right? So healing is on the other side of the mountain. Financial prosperity is on the other side of the mountain. Whatever you need is on the other side. You start declaring the word, speaking the word. Faith comes, faith works, faith moves your mountain. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to be uh, very brief in hours. I just wanted to give a quick testimony about some financial things that have happened with us. Uh, as most of y'all know kind of our history where we came from Columbia. I had my own business. We, you know, were successful what people would consider. God told us move, go to this church. One of the best decisions we ever made in our life. We knew God told us to come. I still remember you saying, hey, y'all need to come help us. Yeah, I still remember where we were. Um, and we knew God had called us to come and help. We still don't know the fullness of that, but we know where we were supposed to be. So um, for many years of our marriage, you know, we've had debt. And no big deal, you pay your bills, it was never a problem, you just pay the bills, right? Well, God told us some years ago, you need to get out of debt. Okay, so we kind of played with that. We were not serious about it like we needed to be. Um, fast forward to last year, about this time last year, I think it was, the Lord really sternly spoke to us, sort of as you said, you know, God gives you his face, and then it's like, okay, it's this or else. So we decided last year, okay, we're really going to move forward and we're going we're to pay this debt off. So we did what we knew we could do. And it was working, but not quickly. And we felt like it needed to be going faster, right? Well, in the midst of all this, I'm thinking, okay, it's time for me to get another car. Not a big deal. You go get another car. Everybody goes and gets another car. We were sitting right there one Sunday morning, and we looked at each other at the same time and said, we're supposed to keep our car. <laughs> You didn't say you're supposed to keep your car. The Holy Spirit told us through the message, you need to keep your car. Well, we're fine with that. We're going to keep the car. So from May of last year until today, supernaturally, God provided finances for us so that today we stand before you owing only our home. We don't know anybody for anything else, not for us, but because God's called us to do some things financially for people that we were not able to do when we were in debt. We will be blessed in the process, certainly, but it's not for us. We give God all the glory because in the natural, there was a no way we could do what we did this last year. There's, there's no way we could do it. So he gets all the glory for that. So since that happened, God's been allowing us to sow money into people's lives, and we're being very obedient to do. We haven't emptied our wallets yet, but we're ready. Doing exactly what God told us to do. And several weeks ago, we sowed an amount of money to different people. But there was a total. Mike's company tells him every year he's not getting a bonus, and every year he always gets a bonus. But this year it wasn't looking promising, but we were okay with how God wanted to do it. The very next week, we got a tenfold return on what we had sown the week before. Hallelujah! So not only are the bills paid, but now we have more to give, and more to give, and more to give. And it's only been by speaking the word. Lord, you said that because we're tithers and givers, you would open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. You would rebuke the devourer for our sakes. You said, Lord, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Yes. It's not difficult. We just have to work the word. Yes. Amen? Amen? So we give God the glory. We rejoice with the rest of you and the things that you're experiencing. And we're looking expectantly forward to all that God is going to continue to do. Amen. God is good. Is Patty ready to come preach?
I had sweet mates, people I shared a bathroom with, that drank all the time. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be a kid. I'm going to do it. Well, I drank one night, and I got a fake ID. Not the best decision. Well, I went to a bar. And my sweet mates left me. I was by myself alone in the bar. Some random boy that went to Coastal Carolina tried to drag me out of the bar against my will. Found some random girl, just grabbed her and hugged her and started crying. Thankfully, that guy finally left me alone and she took me back to my dorm with another guy to make sure we were fine. And then I slept, walked out of my room and laid on the floor and just bawled my eyes out. And then after that day, I started having nightmares. When I was younger, I was molested by a very close family member. And the nightmares were consistent. Every single night, they were there. I was scared to be alone with my own dad. Well, I sat down with the man that molested me, and I told him that I forgave him. And you know, I had nothing. I didn't want to be controlled like that. I didn't deserve that. And it's, the Lord showed me that even though I felt almost hate towards him, that it wasn't going to do me any good at the end of the day. And the devil tried to tell me that the only way I could ever feel happy was if a boy or a man told me I was worth it. And I did lots of things that are very, I have a reputation, a very strong one. And I tried to kill myself because of it. I had an unsuccessful suicide in 2020, which then led to I was allowed to be alone. It was very hard. Social services had to get involved because when your kid tries to kill themselves, they think it's a parent issue. But this is the, I'm stopping therapy in June because my therapist thinks that I'm okay now to function without a therapist. I want to stop medicine, but I cannot do that without physically getting sick and it can lead to seizures. And the only reason why I survived my suicide was because one day I decided not to eat. And I like to eat a lot. And just because I didn't eat, I lived and I don't have seizures every day in my life. And that since I've gotten saved, it has been an even harder battle to walk with God. I feel like people that should support me most do not. But at the end of the week, I come to Faith's house every Saturday night, and I just feel at peace. And then I wake up and come here, and then I go back home. And this is the most at peace I've felt in my life in my entire life. Well, that's all I got. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Ms. Rhonda, you ready?
So we did, and by then, I'd started my team to get my fingers, and I had gotten where I, I didn't wear my, my wedding rings, because, um, you know, I didn't know during the night whether or not, I, you know, I, it would go numb, and I'd have to cut them off, I mean, that moved for me, not good. But, um, anyway, um, got results back, and she said, there's something going on um, with the C3 and 4. And um, she said, it's not so bad now, it's not bad now, it's just a little arthritic looking, but we'll keep an eye on it, you know. And I'm like, okay, I'm not having surgery again. I am not going through this again. I, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to give it to God. God's got this. And then um, Pastor Jason had that healing service, and I got in line. <laughs> oh, Lord God, Lord God. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I didn't feel it right away. Um, that's the end of the first Wednesday night I had it. Um, that Thursday, I didn't really feel my, myself. I'm usually up piddling or tinkering, whatever, around the house is good to say, and I don't need to hurry this up. <laughs> um, so I just laid in bed that Thursday, and I'm like, mm, you know, and every time I get up, and I was like, I'm like something just is, is not. This, this is not me. Well, anyway, I got up that Friday morning, and um, I was like, my tingling's gone. It is it. And I said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Put, put on rings, and I was like, I've been wearing them ever since, you know. Yeah. But, um, and then, you know, I would keep having this, like, like I had to go up that Thursday, and it started checking my blood pressure. Okay, if anybody that's had pain, then no, your blood pressure was like, yeah. okay. I was checking my blood pressure, um, you know, for a few days there. And every time I go to my pain clinic or in such, they were taking it, be like 135, 140, you know, 80 something or whatever. <laughs> Praise the Lord for this. <laughs> my blood pressure has been the most regular that it has ever been. Like I used to be, like 110, 115. My pain management, I may have taken three pain pills. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off the nurse. I was out of work in the office yesterday for my dad because he can't do it. And I just turned around and I looked at what I had done. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am healed. I'm healed. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. And then last Wednesday night, oh. Pastor Jason was, uh, you know, just praying over the mind and stuff, and I'm like, you know, the devil did kind of kind of work me a little bit of saying, mm -mm, nah, I'm not really good. He just, I'm like, no, I've got my faith built up. The devil, you are a liar, Father. <laughs> and so I, and he called the people in line and said, well, let me jump in that line too to get that taken care of. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. God is good.
had to be a reason. I didn't know what it was. I left God. God didn't need me. So I continued on with the hurricane duty. Got a call the next day. A lady wanted me to help her cousin get back home. I knew which road was closed. I helped her maneuver until she got back home. She called me a few days later, thanked me for helping me. I said, okay, did you get your mother on? She said, yeah. I said, well, we're checking on people, making sure everybody's fine. So if you want to, I'll check on them, make sure everything's okay with her and everything. She said, okay, she sent me the address. Three weeks, I stayed down at the beach. Finally, when I came back home, the last week of hurricane duty, I was working with uh, Kathy Bass with Slade. And the last day of hurricane, that week, Tommy Farr was riding me. He was a sled agent from up in Greenville. We rode together that day. It was on my Sunday. I said, Tommy, I've got to go by and check this evidence. I promised. And I, I, won't, I won't be caught in a lie. When I pulled up in the yard, there was a car and a truck there. I told Tommy, I said, look, I don't know. It might be a jealous of him. It might be an outrageous, crazy boyfriend. I don't know. I said, you watch one of them. If I go to the door, I'm going to, if a man comes to the door, I'm going to tell him I'm looking for Roy. <laughs> and you watch and see if Roy runs out the back. Okay? <laughs> but we didn't feel a chance to the point. <laughs> We talked for almost two hours, the three of us. We talked about God, family. When I left, I felt so good that, you know, weight had been missing off of me. And it went long, I was going to her house at 5 o'clock in the morning. They eat breakfast. And we had morning devotion. And for those who know Vera, you don't have to cook Cheerios. Okay? You don't. But through her, she led me here. And here, my faith was reborn. You know what I mean? My walk with God is stronger than it ever was. And it's true. God never left me. He was there. All I had to do was turn around. And there he was. And he provided for me a lot better now than I've ever had. I even got a bonus. I got a lot to have to do. One more thing you have to do. Amen. Yes, God is good. Amen. Where's Miss Logan up there? Every one of these are, are so awesome to hear what God is doing. Good morning, church. Um, so this started a couple months ago. Um, I worked at this job for almost two years, April, and it just took a turn for the worse. I mean, it was awful. And people in church, the pastor tells you, surround yourself by like-minded people and people that encourage you. He's not joking. Well, I mean, it got to the point, I worked there eight hours a day, five days a week, and they would just knock me down. They would make me feel like I was nothing. And everybody knew to an extent what it was, but I, I, I held it in because I don't know why. I was like, this is the only job in the world in my head. Like, I don't know why I even thought that. So, you know, I tried to hold it together. I was stressed out. I was worried. I was, my anxiety was coming back. I mean, I just got rid of that thing. <laughs> so, I still held it together. You know, I didn't do what I was supposed to. It was my fault. I did I did step away. And then, I mean, it got to the point that people started noticing. And I was like, well, I don't want that to happen. You know, Lauren encouraged me big time. I mean, she fussed at me a little bit. She did fuss at me. But I applied to places. I, you know, I did everything. I had a couple interviews, but it just wasn't right. And now, keep in mind, I'm still relying on my own self. I don't know why I still did that, but I still did. So my mom sent me a link one day. I applied. The next day, he wanted to talk to me. I called him. 
he was like, I want you to come in, I want to interview you. So, you know, I still was going. Now, at this time, I was like, okay, God, you know, I'm done. I, I can't do this by myself. I, it's impossible. I can't do this. I broke down at work. It was bad. It was awful. So I started relying on God. I had my verse. I, I, I read it every time I thought about it. I said, God, this is what your word says. I'm following what you told me. And so I held on to it. I went to the interview. He would, it sounds so good, but at the same time, I'm like, it could sound amazing, but it could be the wrong thing. So he told me to call me back with, you know, the money, the business. So after he called me back, I was like, God. And I just broke down crying again. I was like, you know, because I knew I had that peace. I had this, God, it was amazing. I mean, I can't even really explain it. I called my mom. I was excited. I called Lauren. I screamed. I got on the phone. I started crying again. And it was, a, it was joyous. Like, it was, I just, I can't even explain it. I mean, I have weekends off. Better pay, better hours, better people around me. I mean, it just is amazing. And like, all I had to do from the beginning, like, he even told me, I sat there one day, he's like, You done? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm done. I hired him on stuff. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I stepped back just, just, to, just to tell you, your way is wrong. Just come on, face it. My, you know, his way is the right way, your way is the wrong way. Pastor Jason says it for a reason. Not just to say it because it's a cute saying, okay? <laughs> but there you go. Amen. God is moving. Amen. Is Papa Johnson, you gonna you gonna share yours, Mr. Alex Johnson? He's a, he's a last minute addition. He said he's gonna tell me this morning.
feeling as close to God as you should, but, um, you know, God remains faithful through whatever we go through or whatever we decide, like outside, to put him through, because he's always there. And like, you're right, Mr. Tommy, he is. He's always there. It's not, it's not, a, it's not him, it's us. <clears throat> but um, I just think back about the events that happened. You know, I was actually sitting on a bucket calling pitches for Addison as she was pitching. And I, you know, and I knew when it gripped me that this was different than anything I'd ever experienced. So, you know, I, I quietly got to Heather and told her I needed to go to the hospital. And, you know, it's so funny. Mr. Ernest was there. He worked for Oregon County EMS and Fire and Rescue, all the above. I don't know all the different titles, but anyway. He was with us and he jumped in the car and, you know, he started driving. And, you know, we were talking about going to Marion. And no disrespect to Marion, it's just not really the place you want to be if you're having, you know, cardiac issues. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, he takes a little detour and goes into um, one of the firehouses he knows because we were in Horry County. Next thing I know, so this was at 704, we walked off the ball field to go to the hospital. He swings by the EMS, and at 8.05, I'm laying on the table having a, a stent put in to, to relieve the blockage that I had. And um, I just think about everybody, everything that was put in place, the two ladies that were there, they were not on another call. They were ready, they were prepared. You know, we were already in Murray County to get straight to, you know, Grand Strand Regional. So, you know, God's faithful even in a time of despair like that, you know, when you're, and like I said, I, I was not concerned about myself. Um, I, I knew, you know, God has better plans for us. But, you know, in those times, you are certainly concerned about, you know, I was concerned about Heather and Grant and Addison, my family, my church family. Um, you know, just, you know, so many, so many other things you want to do and you want to, you know, share. And, and I, I look at this as an opportunity to share. And everybody that I've seen since, I have shared it with. You know, just that it, it's not, you know, just fortunate to be there, just fortunate that, and God placed us there for a reason, and those people there for a reason. So I'm just telling you, remain faithful, even in the times when it seems like, you know, you don't have that connection. God's there, and we go through peaks and valleys, and that's, that's just a part of life. But God will always be faithful to us. And, um, I, you know, I was thinking back about Dawson and Grayson and seeing Lauren and all these that, you know, have come through the youth group, and I just think about, you know, how much they mean to me for being able to, you know, talk and associate with them and just have good times with them and how much I really appreciate your kids. And um, and I want you to know that it's been a big blessing to me, you know, being around y'all and having lessons and doing stuff and things that, you know, you really don't think matter. I, I think those are the times that really matter when you're in a situation like that. But I, I do thank God. I'm very... Um, I'm very thankful for my family, Laurie and Jason, and mom and dad, and Heather and my family, but my church family as well. I know you guys are lifting us up in prayer, and I certainly appreciate that. I just want to say thank you. Um, and I was coming to stay on the side of you, but um, just want to, you know. Thank the Lord for His Spirit and giving us direction. Um, Chip had been having some pressure for a couple of weeks and um, had left that morning to go, excuse me, around 3 o'clock to go to Charleston. And I was supposed to have been with him, but because of children and responsibilities, I was not. And so, two weeks right before our spring break he um, called me that morning at, at 11 o'clock and he said Heather I've ran out of my triglyceride medicine and they did not call it in um do you think I could I need just a, a few pills and instantly it hit me the Lord said is he having a heart attack and I said who's around to you he said I'm in my own by myself and I said, well, I'm not trying to scare you. But at that time, he was profusely nominating. And um, I kept calling him every five minutes. His mom and dad, they came by, and I told him what had happened. Well, Chip got on the road because we were leaving for vacation. Now, this is two weeks before he had his heart attack. And um, 
I caught him on the road, and he was on the Charleston Bridge. And again, he starts profusely vomiting. We couldn't get to him. But God had his hand on him. Because he pulled over and slept for 30 minutes. And when he rolled in our driveway, he looked as though he'd been in a bar the night before. <laughs> because he, he came in with not his, he changed out of his under armor clothes because he that's all he had was what he wore to the meeting. And I, he said, we're ready to go on vacation. And I said, no, you're going to sleep. And so he was laid out in his chair with no socks on loafers, which is pretty normal for him, but his button-up shirt was like zigzag button. And um, he said, you know, just give me a minute, we're going. So, um, you know, immediately I said, you know, we can wait. But anyway, God gives discernment. And so all, you know, the next week even on vacation, he said, you know, I've never really came down like I do normally on vacation. But, um, and he, you know, thought he had some anxiety because everybody, you know, just work will stress you out at times and that kind of thing. And he and I kept talking. And so that Tuesday before he had a heart attack, he went and saw his doctor that was supposed to be prescribing his triglyceride medicine. And anyway, at that time, I had talk, called and told them the events that had happened. And I said, I think he needs a stress test. Well, long story sh short, this was a Tuesday. Um, Thursday, he was on the ball field with Addison and he had his heart attack. And so Chip comes off the ball field. He was standing on third base, coached the whole game, went and sat on the bucket, caught Addison's pitches, and very calmly walks over to me. He doesn't give this much detail, but I'm going to give it to you because this is this was a God. Um, and he said, I need to go. So I walk over to my dad and I tell him, I said, I know life's been busy, but Dad, Chip's been having some heaviness of pressure on his chest. And he whips his head around to me and um, says he's going. And I said, no, I'm good. We're going to ride right to Mary and just stop and then go on the Florence, but just, you know, have him check. Long story short, um, my dad gets in our Sequoia and he starts driving it like he's driving an ambulance. And I knew immediately in my spirit that my dad knew that something was bad wrong. We go a mile down the road to the station. And Chip said, Miss Furman, what you doing? He said, buddy, I'm gonna get you some oxygen. And when my dad came out, he had them to hook him up and Chip was having a heart attack sitting in my Sequoia. They immediately put him on the ambulance. And I remember Chip asking them, am I gonna make it? And he looks at me and he tells me, I love you and I love the children. And he was hurting. And so he gets on the emails and I said, Dad, can I go with him? He said, no. And all the way, all I can remember is Miss Janice Wallace putting up on Cindy Gunnan's door. I will leave, and I have not told him this, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. My dad drove my car with no gas in it all the way. And he says, baby, you don't have any gas. I said, you're on zero. But you got 20 miles after that. <laughs> he said, baby, but not at this speed. We're not going to make it. And I said, yeah, we're going to make it. But the point is, is you know, we've got to have some scriptures to stand on. I don't have a bunch memorized, but I have that one. And that's all I can say all the way. And when he looked at me Saturday and told me that he was going to church, I looked at him like he had lost his mind because he couldn't even hardly get out of the shower. But he, we were on the ball field at 7.15. He walked off the ball field off at 7.15. We went down the road a mile. At 8.10, he was laying on the table. 25 minutes, they walked out and they said he's good to go. 100% heart function. He was, he had one artery 100% blocked. And his blood flow was normal. And my dad sent me the picture 
of the EKG that they sent to the doctor on the ambulance, and you can see where it was blocked, and the blood flow just popped immediately. God had everything orchestrated because if he had went without oxygen any longer, for, for those of you who don't know, every minute without oxygen counts. And I, I, I thank God for having those people in line that knew what to do. And like Mr. Kenny said yesterday, he said, you know, Green Strand Hospital, it was like the Navy SEALs. And when, they, when you walk in and they tell you they don't need your insurance card, you know something's bad wrong. But I just thank him and praise him for that. And I'm going you know, to add something else. Our son Grant. Um, God is healing him. He's, it's a gradual healing. But he's been off of his medicine since December. He, God had showed us some things, some reactions his body was having. And it was physical. And he's been without it since December. And we just thank God for it. Is every day perfect? No. Is it easy? No. But, you know, and, and those that don't believe like we believe, they'll look at you and say, like you've lost your mind. You know, but I had to say that too because he is a miracle working God. They won't be disappointed. Lastly, for today, Jonathan, you got something you need to share, and then we'll let you guys go.
you know, I'm just real grateful to be in the position I'm in, and, and we just get started. Amen. All right, I come up here and, you know, let y'all know what's going on. The greenhouse has been a grind. <laughs> I, I, two, two weeks ago, I forgot to roll the curtain down. I was at work. I forgot to tell Stacy and I walked in there. It was like 125 degrees in there. It was so hot that a wasp were dying inside of the greenhouse. And I was, I'm telling you, I was laid out on the floor crying in the greenhouse, defeated and broken. And he just, he, he don't quit. God, don't quit. He, he will put, if he put it in me, I trust him. I'm, the pastor said, I'm just dumb enough, just country enough to know I've been through what I've been through that I ain't got no choice but trust him. And I got Stacy, I tell you, she was. Yeah, here we need two or three o'clock in the morning. The greenhouse helping me. I just, I, I just like, I don't deserve it. I'm just real fortunate to be here. I'm grateful to Pastor Jason. I wouldn't be in this profession without him. And uh, he knows how I feel about him. Thank you all. Amen. God has been standing your feet. Father, we come before you right now in Jesus' name. We love you and thank you so much for this day. Many blessings, your hand upon us, your spirit leading and guiding us. We thank you for every person that's here, Father, this morning. Under the sound of our voice, Father, we know that in some degree, Father, you have moved in every single one of our lives, Father. You are a good, good Father. And Father, as we look to you and trust you, no matter the storm, no matter the opposition, as our faith in you, there is no such thing. as an impossible situation. There's no such thing as a hopeless situation or person. As we trust you, Father, you'll always see us through for your word says all things are possible to him that believeth. This one altar call this morning is necessary. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're here this morning. You see, these people, everybody in this place, their lives have been touched. They started out with receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. The word of God says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Whoever calls upon his name will be saved. No matter the where you've been, no matter the life you've lived, no matter how much darkness you've heard some of these testimonies. I tell you all the time in this church, don't let the suits and the dresses or whatever people's wearing fool you. People's come out of darkness and hell. And Jesus has set them free and cleaned them up and done all that's been done in their life as they trust him. So he can do the same thing for you regardless of who you are. But it all starts with putting your faith and trust in not this world, not yourself, but in Jesus himself. So if you're here today, every head bowed and every eye closed, and you say, Pastor, I've heard these testimonies, I've heard these stories. And today I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. We don't want to end this service today without giving you that opportunity. Just slip your hand up boldly because I want to pray with you before you leave. Anybody in the house want to give you that opportunity today? Yes. The word is true. Amen. God is good. Anybody else in this place today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy and mighty name forever. If you lift your hand, if you want to come up here, I'm going to pray with you before you leave today. Anybody in the place, want to pray, I'm going to say a prayer with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
just with his heart. You control it with his heart. And Father, you can look back and say, yeah, I've heard words here and there, but today is a day of surrender. Today is a day of the end of his life, so to speak. But his best days are yet ahead of him because it's the end of his life and much of the life he's known to surrender his life to enjoy the life that only comes through Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. We thank you from the inside out, down from the inside from each day, that you're speaking to his heart. You're leading his heart. And the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man, which he is, are directed or ordered by the Lord. We thank you every step he needs to take and every decision he needs to make, he'll know. And that's the way he'll go. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and I can see in the spirit as you showed me, I see him on steps. Yeah, there are decisions and steps and such, but you go upwards, up and onwards, moving up into the greater things of God, the greater blessing of God, a peace and a joy greater than you've ever known. Why, I think you go to Walking in your blessings, Father, will it be from this day, meet God directing and showing the way, for as we've said, and you've said in your word, he's yours and your is. We thank you, Father, it's done. In Jesus' name. God is with us. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. God is moving mighty. It's been a blessed day. A blessed day. We love you. We appreciate you. Wednesday night, we'll be ready to go again. Yes. And you guys are dismissed.